Thank you.
you have something in your life today, you need God to take off of you. If there's something going on within you, you don't have to talk to me about it. That's okay. But let's have a talk with Jesus. Amen. Tell him all about it. Yeah. Because he cares yeah. more than you think. Amen. He cares enough about the runaway. He cares enough about the son that stayed home. He cares enough about everybody all in between. So no matter where you are and what it is that you're dealing with, and I know it's a lot that pride is stuck into the heart of people, pride and fear. We are too prideful and sometimes too fearful to admit this is where it hurts. But Thomas had to see where it hurt. He had to see the scars and he had to understand this is the reality of life that we all have to face. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord brings them out of them all. And if you got enough crazy sense to trust God with it, I put it all in his hands. And if you're willing to trust God with it, I'm here to tell you there is not a friend like the lovely Jesus. No, not one. No one can heal all of us.
stand today at the altar. And we're not coming pretty, Lord. We're coming scarred. We're coming bruised. We're coming battered. But I'm coming, my God, to give you glory. To first say thank you, Jesus. You've been so good to me. Thank you. 
give us in this land today. And Father, give us fire in this land today. Lord, today you cry out so we don't take it.
right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Father, give us ears to hear about to receive a mind to react to the infallible truth of your word. In Jesus' name. Back to the law. The Bible says, 
said, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 19, the law made nothing perfect but the bringing in. This is why we have celebratory reason yes. of a better hope. Somebody said something better. Now, you know how it is when you find something better, you stick with it, right? Yeah. How many of y'all found a better restaurant than what you were going to before? Come on. How many of y'all found a better fishing spot than what you found before? We stick to what we know is better, right? Yeah, Rightfully so. And if Jesus is so much better, I believe I just don't stick with it. I don't know if I'm going to get through this message, y'all, but I just believe I found something better. I was trying to crack. I was smoking marijuana. I was drinking in the booze club. I was doing my thing, but I found something better. When Jesus found me, he lifted me up out of that stuff. Man, I feel it, man. When Jesus found me, I was sinking, Sister Nell, deep in sin. Someone would say the beauty of holy 
king is they were drawn to that special place. And the next picture showed him. It will show you how they had a stairway to go up to it. The altar was a beautiful thing, but it was a lesson. So magnificent it was. And yet it was a place where you do business with God. The altar is a place where you do business with God. Perhaps the business is too intense. So you back up. My friend, I want to encourage you. It's time to do business at the altar. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, every priest stand daily. This is why one priest couldn't do it alone. They had to have a team, the whole tribe of Aaron, was priest unto the Lord. Oftentimes they would be offering the same sacrifice over and over again. If you read from Leviticus, you will see how they had to take apart the sacrifice and separate parts and this mount go here and that goes there and blood here and uh, you had to. This part is burned. This part don't be burned. If you didn't do it right, you paid dearly. Unlike today, the work of a priest was no light manner. Every priest is up on the screen. Every priest had a skilled work. Every priest had to be a butcher. Every priest gained experience because they like the cowboys you watch on TV had to wrestle with an animal that wasn't so willing to die. Don't get that pretty bitch in your mind that all of them laid down. No, they had to fight. They had to fight. I never forget, I married my wife, and she took me to a family home back in a little town called Scriven, Georgia. Everybody ever heard of Scriven, Georgia? And trust me, I never did. One lifetime. It took me to a swap house. Never been to a swap house. Anybody here ever been to a swap house? They play a great game with the animals. They march them up this thing like they go into a feeding trough. And before they can realize it, they, they walk into this trap. And this thing dropped down, and another thing dropped down and cut their head off. Well, as I sat there and I watched, I could tell by the time they get up in the little trap. They could sense something was wrong, but guess what? It was too late. They were trapped. And you could see them trying to buck to go back. Because they could sense some kind of danger, but they were trapped. And this thing would come down and cut their head off, and then they would go on around and start the process. Animals have a keen nature. Some of those animals were really wrestling with. Some of those animals were really challenging. To bring those animals to the altar was never a pretty task. I think I have a picture of a priest sitting there with another priest wrestling. This would be typical of what you would see to get this animal up on this altar and slay it. What I'm trying to embed in your mind is this was not no easy task. Old Testament priests had work to do. Hard work. Tiresome work. No animal was willing to die. To bring these animals to the altar was not a pretty task. So before we had bull wrestlers, we had priests that was wrestling. We wrestle today, but we don't wrestle physically. We wrestle in the spirit. Some people you wrestle with trying to get them to the altar. You wrestle trying to get them to the place where change takes place. You wrestle with them. Sometimes it is so tiresome. Wrestle with them. Here's our problem. We bring them to the altar, but no one is ready to die. Placing is a problem because we've not taught them to that. People come to our altars and they express great remorse. Sometimes even beg forgiveness, but yet, because they refuse to die, get up and go right back to the same issues. Prosperity really has ruins. That's a bit. 
Prosperity really has ruined the church. So caught up in the enamor with the buildings and the ministry, my soul. We got ministry for everything now. We got foot club ministry, hand ministry, we got senior ministry. Young, everything's a ministry. Where before everything was, you need to be delivered. And once you got delivered, you didn't need all this ministry. The early church didn't know about all this. They didn't do all this. They prayed. And at the altar, things changed. People loved one another. People got along. Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, those that live godly will suffer. They will suffer for it. And I'm telling you, your greatest persecution is yourself. Your biggest enemy is yourself. You can be honest with yourself. Your greatest adversary is you. So you must be delivered from the enemy. altar stood high, not a pretty sight. It's the place where death took place. And this is where people run from. It's the place you need to go and die to yourself and die to your dreams. And then you pray, dear Lord, not my will, but what? Thy will be done. Then you do what my good friend Ron asked you to say. You, you say, Lord, not give me what I want, but what to want. And when you give me what to want, the old folks didn't have all these theological assertions, but they used to say, any way you want to bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. I won't be living where you got me mad when I'm not somewhere else. I'll be glad with what I have right there. Any way you want to bless me, I'll be satisfied. And folks, there are some people, they are so satisfied with Jesus, they don't want nothing else, they don't want no one else, they want Jesus. Jesus is all we need. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, the law, all things by the law purged with blood. And you had to have blood. And this was only temporary. Because humans is what drove us into failure. Animals was just pacifying until Jesus Our biggest problem is that people have not died. Every chance they get, they show us just how much alive they are. Every chance they get, they just show us just how, how mean they can go back to being and how hateful. I'm talking about people in church. You're their friend until you start wanting to give them that advice they need. Now all of a sudden, you know, I ain't got no use for you. What about it? I'm free. Get a saddle, so I don't worry about that. See you. 
get them to church is just a start. Now we got to get them to the altar. Biggest challenge now is getting them to church. Getting to the church ain't nothing. Joining the church, nothing. Have you died? Proverbs said the fruit of righteousness is a tree. It's a tree of life. And he that went of souls is wise. You notice it takes a great amount of wisdom now to deal with it. The priest would end up a bloody mess. Souls. Is a messy business. You're dealing with souls. You're dealing in very delicate, fragile business. Souls are messy business. If you are interested in delivering just your little cute message, your little make and shout messages that does nothing for the soul but everything for the feelings. And trust me, I'm not against feeling good. I'm not against a good time. I was raised having a good time. Man, we had brothers could play, man. We had cousins and uncles and Professor Charles Moore and the organ band. I mean, we had, the radio program was live and the church was live and we had a good time. Temple number two there in Bronx, they would pray for an hour in that little storefront. And boy, the power would attract sinners right out the street into the church. I remember the night the Lord touched my mother couldn't really understand what had happened. But man, they rejoiced. They weren't the kind of saved to get saved and then get in the car and go home. No. Mama was all through the house. Nobody slept that night. You remember that night, kid? Mama was walking all through the house saying something. I didn't know what she was going to do. She just going all night. They called people on the phone. Mama got saved. They called people down in Florida. Mama was steady going. I thought it would be over the next day. The next day got up, Mama was still rejoicing. People get saved, no, I don't know what Holy Ghost they get now. They go right on back to their bar, right on back to a bed, or whatever. But what Mama got lasted for days. And a lot of people now, I think really, we can use people just calling on Jesus till they get that mess out of them. They need to die until you get to the altar. They won't die. Some people need to tarry too much. I believe some people literally need to come here and get on their knees and just scream Jesus, scream Jesus, till they get that homosexual spirit out of them, till they get that lust out of them, till they get that stuff out. They need to call on Jesus and just keep calling until something happens. They need to get to the altar and just cry out to the Lord. We got away from that because we were too embarrassed. But the fruit that you saw in those people's lives was genuine. Mama carried on like that for days. By next Sunday, they had service. It was hot. All they had to do was open it up. And Mama would hit the floor and everybody else with them. Because back then, people rejoiced with you when they got delivered. I don't know why the Lord would take me back to that because I didn't think this would come up. But in the church I came up in, when Sherelle got saved, so true. we sat there as little kids. Wasn't nothing funny. We could feel there was a presence in the room. It was greater than us. And we wanted what was on him because it made him act right. It made him do right. He had joy that was genuine. Sinners clapped just because they could clap. But saints clap because they know in whom they believe. Yeah. And they know that he is able to keep yeah. that which he is committed of them. Somebody said, work, work, work. work, work. Sometimes while the animal was dying, you would go into convulsions and start kicking. This is why you don't play around with sacrificing with people. 
Just stay in spirit. You do your thing. Stay in your lane. Mind your business as best you can. But you can't stop the spirit invasion. Sometimes we wish we could, but we can't. So we have to rely on the spirit. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, when all those things come in, the spirit of the Lord lifts it up.
standing here. Neither will anybody in this room. Son, pick up the nap. Pick up the nap. Pick up the nap. You got to pray and pray. Pick up the nap. Wherever it is God would have you to be, pick that man up and pray. We live in this critical days. We need all our soldiers, y'all. Some of us got to get out the infirmity and we got to help them heal. But we need them back on the front line. Come on. We need our missionaries. We need our mothers. Thank you. 